Hello, we are going to talk about strong acids and strong bases. Now you want to have these two lists memorized. Uh, let us first start with the definition. So a strong acid will 100% ionize, which means it 100% breaks apart in water. Uh, so let's write that above strong acids. This is going to 100% ionize. Now strong bases, notice this terminology, these 100% dissociate. So when you put these in water, they 100% break apart. Now I know that this is kind of nitpicky. Um, I just don't want you to be caught in a, a college class and to have a professor grill you because you didn't use the right term. Um, both of these mean 100% breaking apart. Now the reason why we use ion is we have um, covalent bonds here that share electrons. So these are ions when they break apart, they become ions in the water. For example, our hydrochloric acid is going to ionize, and when it completely breaks apart, 100% ionizes, it will be an H plus and a Cl minus. They become ions. Now, to contrast that, bases, these are all salts. They're all ionic compounds. They're already ions. They're just in that electrostatic force of attracting to one another to form the compound, the formula unit. Uh, so for example, when lithium hydroxide completely breaks apart, 100% dissociates, it becomes Li plus plus hydroxide, lithium ion plus the hydroxide ion. So you can see they look the same. We have ions floating in water and they completely break, broke apart. We just use slightly different terms because of the type of bonding. The strong acids, covalent bonds become ions, and the salts, the ionic bonds, they're already ions, so we say they dissociate. Okay, with that little detail there, uh, let's look at the list. Uh, so HCl, hydrochloric acid. Remember binary acids when you have hydrogen and one nonmetal. This is the only time you use the term hydro. Hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid. Um, next, we have our oxy acid, so a polyatomic with a hydrogen. This is where you have to look at the endings eight and ite. If the polyatomic ends in eight, you change it to ic acid. If the ending ends in ite, you change the ending to us acid. I ate too much, I got sick. It takes two of us to fight, the two things to remember those. So HNO3, this is nitrate, so this is called nitric acid. Here we have sulfuric acid, oh, excuse me, chloric acid and perchloric acid. So you will want to have those seven memorized. Now, a common question that will catch students that I want to point out. I want you to notice the uh, halogens right here. Okay, there are the halogens. You can see hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic. The one that sticks out, you think, oh, it should be there, is hydrofluoric, HF. Now, don't be fooled. It's not a strong acid because it doesn't 100% ionize. It doesn't completely break when you put it in water. It is called a weak acid. Weak acid because it doesn't 100% ionize. But this is the part that's tricky. It is still hugely powerful. It will eat through anything except for plastic very, very dangerous. It can kill you. It can stop your heart. It's really dangerous. So it's powerful, but it's classified as weak because it doesn't completely ionize and break apart. And it's a good thing it doesn't because it's so powerful. So you will see on a test HF, and this is what you have to remember. When you are doing double replacement reactions, and you'll see aqueous on all of these, these will break apart when you do your complete ionic equation. So I'd write H plus Cl minus, HBr plus Br minus. However, anything that is weak, um, and it's the exception, it's going to have aqueous on it, you do not break it apart in the complete ionic equation because it only partially ionizes. Only about 5% of that is going to break apart. I'll show you an example with it. Uh, but keep in mind, any acid that's not on this list automatically is considered weak. In addition to that, 
If you have to write a net ionic equation, you do not break apart, you do not ionize in the net ionic equation, you do not ionize the um, weak acid. Okay, now let's look at our bases. Okay, the bases are easy to memorize because they follow the periodic table. In fact, I'll show you right now and then I'll read them to you. Um, so check this out. I was purposeful in how I wrote those. They match the alkali and the alkaline earth metals. So here's your alkali metals right there. Check it out. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide. And then if you come from potassium straight over alkaline earth metals, there we have calcium, um, strontium, and barium. Check it out. Calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, barium hydroxide. Those all 100% dissociate. If you have any other base, it automatically will be considered weak. Here's an example for you. Um, a very common base that you'll see in a gen chem, gen chem class or AP um, IB level class is going to be ammonia. Ammonia, NH3. So that is a weak base it only partially is going to react with the water. Um, only these eight, right here, these eight bases um, are going to be strong bases. Now, how I remember this, it looks like a chair to me. When I look at the periodic table, you have the alkali with the alkaline earth. So there's the long part, the back of the chair, and then there's the seat and the front legs of the chair. I've also had students tell me it's a Tetris pattern. I don't play Tetris, but maybe that will help you. 